So let's see, we started with eight bonding electrons and we used up only four. So the answer is yes, we have four bonding electrons left. So what we need to do is fill in those extra bonding electrons into our bonds. Should I put an extra pair of electrons here, does anyone think? No. The reason is because we already have a full valence shell for our hydrogen. It doesn't want any more electrons. What about between the carbon and nitrogen? Yes, definitely, because both of these are not anywhere near filling up their octets yet. So we can put actually all four of our extra electrons in between the carbon and the nitrogen. Now we have six things around the carbon, or six things around the nitrogen, and we have eight around the carbon. So what we do as our seventh step is then figure out if we have uh, any extra electrons, valence electrons left at all. So we started with 10 valence electrons. We used up eight of those electrons in terms of making bonds. So it turns out that we have two valence electrons left. So we need to add those two valence electrons left as lone pair electrons in our structure. So which atom is in need of those lone pair electrons? The nitrogen. The reason being that's the only one that didn't have a full octet yet. So now we're done. Actually, there is one more step, which is to determine the formal charge. This is a good way to actually check if your Lewis structure is correct or not. We haven't actually learned how to, to uh, calculate the formal charge yet. We'll learn, it, we'll learn it soon. So we won't do it for this molecule, uh, but we'll go back and do it for some of our other examples. And you can go back and do it for this one. The other thing is that we can rewrite our HCN in terms of bonds. So we know every time we have two electrons, that's a bond. So we have H, then we can draw our bond as a line. And then we have a triple bond there because we have three pairs of electrons. So it looks a lot less messy if we just draw our Lewis structure like this for HCN, where we have H bonded to C, triple bonded to N, and then uh, a lone pair on the nitrogen there. All right, so this is the same procedure that we're going to go through regardless of what kind of Lewis structure we're going to draw. What you'll actually find in terms of asking your TAs about the Lewis structure rules is that sometimes they won't be as good at them as you are. And the reason is, once you've drawn enough of these structures, you start to get a lot of chemical intuition about what's right or what's not right. It just looks wrong to you if it's wrong. So your TA might take a minute, so be patient with them if they see your structure and they say, oh, no, 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 that's wrong, that's terrible, and they don't immediately know why, they might need to go through the rules with you. You might need to remind them. Hopefully they'll all study them again so this won't be an issue. But what really happens is, you know, as you go on in chemistry, you draw so many of these, you can just draw them without following the rules. Uh, some of you might get almost to that point or you might be at that point now, but I recommend this for you and for me and for the TAs. Go through the rules because there'll be cases where it's a little bit tricky and it's always much faster to have gone through step by step than to try to uh, just kind of hit or miss, figure out what's going to be right or wrong. So let's try another example here. And let's try a case now where instead of dealing with a neutral molecule, we have an ion. So we have Cn minus. And what I'll mention to you just in terms of the fact that we're finally dealing with real molecules, which is, uh, or mo molecules that are made up of more than one atom, which is kind of exciting for me and maybe for some other of you that uh, like to move into thinking about what some of the uh, consequences of these molecules reacting might be. A lot of the examples that we're going to give you in terms of trying out your Lewis structures will be molecules that are used in organic synthesis, or maybe they're molecules that react in interesting ways with biomolecules in your body or proteins in your body. So uh, you already will have a head start when you get on to later classes like organic chemistry or if you're thinking about biochemistry, where being able to draw the Lewis structure allows you to think about eventually the reactivity of the molecule, which becomes very interesting in thinking about how you're going to synthesize a more complex molecule or how that molecule is going to interact with a, an active site in a protein in the body. So for example, just talking about hydrogen cyanide or the cyanide anion, uh, these are both uh, molecules which are used in organic synthesis. So particularly the cyanide anion uh, and salts of the cyanide anion. 
so either potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide. These are used in, in synthesis in terms of making carbon-carbon bonds. So if you're trying to make a more complicated organic molecule, carbon-carbon bonds are one of the most difficult things to make in organic chemistry, and it turns out that CN- is a very reactive molecule, so it's a good way, even though uh, we'll go over some drawbacks in a second, it is a good way to make carbon-carbon bonds. It's very reactive, and because of course, we have this carbon here. What you end up doing is adding a carbon to your molecule.